primarily do breast reconstruction and uh, as you know the breast reconstruction is the most common cause of lymphedema in western countries so I see a lot of patients who have that. I became interested in it in about 2007, 2008 or so and then um, during that time uh, you know I decided to sort of learn more about it and we I was really surprised that there's not a whole lot known about the pathology of lymphedema so we spent some time reviewing that and then uh, because we didn't really have a good idea what the pathology is and still don't, we did some studies, basic science studies, to figure out what causes the lymphedema in patients. The thing that I couldn't put together was that the sequence of events doesn't fit. So, you know, uh, if you think that lymphatic injury is the cause of lymphedema, which of course it starts the problem, then everyone who has lymph, lymph surgery would develop lymphedema, but they don't. Um, if you think that lymphatic surgery is the cause of lymphedema, then everyone who develops lymphedema does so immediately after surgery and they don't. So it usually takes about eight months or a year or so to develop. And those don't really fit with that model. So we, we try to come up with a model that explains that. And, and the thought that we have is that um, the lymphatic injury sort of initiates a cascade of events that in some patients causes fibrosis, which is scarring of tissues. And in those patients, they end up developing lymphedema. The reason why it takes time to develop it is because the fibrosis that's necessary to cause dysfunction or the lymphatic vessels to not work anymore takes time to happen. At some point you reach the threshold where the lymphatic vessels no longer function and then that's when the uh, lymphedema becomes noticeable. If you look at the pathology of lymphedema it's actually fat deposition. So lymphedema becomes untreatable because people deposit fat in their arms. So initially when people have lymphedema it's really a fluid problem and that's why it responds to massage and wrapping and things like that. However over a prolonged period of time Lymphedema is a fat problem because it causes fat to accumulate. For that reason, for example, a very common thing that we do for, re for reconstruction of these patients is liposuction. That's a common method of treatment for lymphedema. So lymphedema and fat are, are very intimately related. Um, I think, and we think, that actually it's well known that um, the lymphatics can regulate fat deposition. So Guillermo Oliver, who's at this meeting, has shown that if you have de defects in your lymphatic system, sort of even very minor defects, uh, those animals become obese when, they, when they're adults, so it causes fat cells to accumulate. Um, of course, we know from lymphedema that happens too. I mean, that's sort of a more acute thing. So I think of lymphedema as regional obesity. I think some women have propensity to put fat in their thighs or hips or whatever. Patients with lymphedema have propensity to put fat in their arm or, or leg wherever they have lymphedema. So that's what I think of it. We've shown in our studies that uh, if you take an animal and give it a high-fat diet, uh, that those animals then develop lymphatic problems. They're, they don't clear fluid as well, the immune cells don't traffic as well, so there's definitely a correlation. Uh, there, was a, there was a paper a few years ago from the New England Journal showing that uh, hyperobese patients develop primary lymphedema, so lymphedema without uh, another cause. Uh, there was another paper from the Scandinavians showing that uh, obese patients have impaired clearance of interstitial fluid, so if, they, if you inject fluid in the interstitial space, which is where the lymphatics work, they don't clear it as well as, uh, as lean patients. So there's clearly a relationship between fat and the lymphatic system, and I think it's a two-way street. Bad lymphatics can cause fat to deposit, uh, and fat can cause lymphatics to not work very well. We've shown that very, very short, shortly after lymphatic injury, if you have accumulation of this fluid, uh, it causes fat cells to, to grow and also cause them to deposit more oil uh, in their cells. Um, so they proliferate and they get bigger. Um, there's been recent studies to show that it's certain components of the fluid that's in the interstitial fluid that does that. Uh, and those things have not been um, clearly identified yet, but it's a, it's a certain subset of proteins within that fluid that does it. So when, when you're not clearing that fluid out of your system, that's backing up and it's causing the fat cells to proliferate. When we do surgery, even on the, on the thinnest person you can find, you will always find fat around their lymphatic vessels, around lymph nodes. Fat and lymph, uh, lymphatic vessels are intimately associated, so they, they sort of need each other. We don't know exactly why. Uh, and, and I think uh, maybe it's trophic factors or something the lymphatic vessels are making for the fat to survive baseline. Uh, so I think it's, it's, it would be exquisitely difficult to get rid of that fat and just normal, regular diet changes or you know, so, sort of something other than extraordinary diet changes probably won't help. It's an interesting topic. It's an evolving area, and I think uh, you know the good thing. The good news is there's a lot more people interested in it. The bad news is that I think we haven't really made a whole lot of progress in the last couple of years, but hopefully we will.